Oh, hi. Welcome back to another episode of Black Dot Miniatures and Paints. Kevin coming back to you this week. We're finishing out our Space Wolves uh, start collecting box for uh, the Primaris. This week we're finishing up the Wolfguard Battle Leader that comes in the box. We already showed how to do the Intercessor. We already showed how to do the Aggressor. Boom. We're going to have this whole kit done up. I think this dude turned out really good. It really surprised me how much I miss painting Space Wolves. So let's check this dude out together. See what y'all think. So anyone who's watched my Space Wolf videos in the past, they know I start out with this Nautilus Blue. It leaves a nice dark blue in all of the recesses and gives us a nice place to work up from. You could definitely use the Fang. You could definitely use a McCrag Blue if you're going for a different color to it. This is just already pre-thinned down, ready to go in the airbrush. I love this color a lot, so hitting it with a full coat here. Next, we move on to mixing up indigo ink and white ink. I really love this trick. This stuff turns out great. So first we go one to one. This is going to establish our nice rust gray color. Okay, so we're going a lot here. We're going pretty hard here, but at the exact same time, we're going to come back, brighten up the peaks and it's going to dull down because inks are semi transparent. We bump up to two to one on the inks. Now we're focusing a lot more on the very, very top, very highest points, um, parts that are going to be exposed to the sun. We're also trying to hit anything that's going to cause it to have a little bit of interest before we wash it down. We continue this escalation up to three to one white ink. We're just adding more white, being more selective of where these highlights go. Ultimately, we are going to end up on pure white ink. It's going to turn out really strange at first, but whenever it does dry, it melts, mats back down. So now here it is, white ink. I spent some serious time staring this dude down like, uh, did I go a little bit too far on this? Eh, it turned out pretty well. It, it really did. It looks super bright here, but it tones back down. It looks okay. So now we're on the edge highlighting. Because of how bright this is, because of how much white ink we did mix in, Finrizian Gray was not hitting it, so we moved on straight up to Administratum Gray. This is a nice, just bright gray color. We're going through, we're hitting all of the panels, all the highlights, any points of interest that we need to add to this model, just to make it go to that next level and look really good. Ultimately, the biggest thing with these edge highlights is just to get your model in a good angle, get your brush in a good angle, get a good flow to the paint, and just work with really, really light brush pressure. That's the biggest part of edge highlighting. You see I messed up there, no biggie, you wipe it off, try that crap again. So as long as you're working with thin paint, you got a good flow to it, it should go pretty easily, but make sure that that model is where you need it to be so you can actually knock these edge highlights out of the park. Now we're going to start laying down a nice undercoat for our silvers as well as painting our blacks at the same time. First we're starting out with doing all the undercoating for our silvers. No big deal there, you're just blocking in the color. Ultimately we will come back later and make these colors uh, silver, but at the same time it gives it a nice place to start from. Whenever you do a silver over this light blue or any other strange color, it just has a weird look to it. It doesn't look as well. It doesn't look the same. So spend this extra little bit of time if you're painting a large amount of silver on your models. It doesn't matter so much with the golds. I'm not sure why. Magic. But as far as the silvers, you definitely want to do your undercoats. We're also hitting the creases in his power armor while we're at it and then his undercarriage. So I've always been looking for a more effective way to do our pelts, and I think we actually found it. We're hitting this with a gray sear, and we're going to ultimately come through with a contrast paint. So just hit it with an all-over coat of gray sear. Be careful not to mess up anything we already laid down with our blues, but get all the uh, pelts and all that covered. I also did the inside of them and hit it all at once with gray, uh, dark oath flesh. So we ended up having to use two coats on this. The first one was a little, mm, a little transparent, looked a little bit odd. But definitely when we hit it with the second coat, it brought it to a nice Mornfang brown kind of look. And we applied some washes too, just to get it to where we needed it to be. Definitely, definitely good stuff for if you're doing a nice textured surface, because that's ultimately what it does. It tries to find the recesses and pull up in those. You have the darker in your recesses, fantastic. We're halfway there when it comes to pelts. You can dry brush it afterwards. So for the golds around the model, we're coming through with Liberator Gold. You can't really tell right here, but we're doing the Aquila on his chest. We also go through and we pick out a bunch of the little gold details around the model. There are quite a few. It is Space Wolves. So if you need to, check the box art. That'll definitely help you. Thank you. 
So next we're coming out the pot with XV88. What we gotta do his axe handle and the holster to his knife. But at the same time, anyone who's seen these videos before know that I do this little trick here. We are gonna make this shoulder pad yellow ultimately. And if you paint it with yellow, you know it is a rough color. So to move from this chestnut brown, this XV88, to the yellow is so much easier than going from straight up blue to yellow. So get a nice coat on there and then we'll come through with the Avril and Sunset. In fact, here it is. So as you can see, it's applying a lot better. I think it's because there's just more matching tones in between these two colors. We did have to apply two coats, but normally if you're applying yellow, you're applying three, you're applying five, you're applying 10. So this is a great way of doing it. It saves you some time, saves you some steps, and it ultimately works out for the better in the end. So coming through with Xander Dust, he does have quite a bit on him. Uh, I kept missing it and had to come back to it, rediscover what I missed, check, so check the box art. That's all I'm getting to there. He's got the skulls on his stomach there. He's got the little skulls on his uh, wrist guards. And depending on what color you decide to do his hair, you do you. Um, we decided to make this cat blonde and it goes a little bit lighter towards the ends. So to make him look like he's got a little bit of age on him. But biggest thing here is just be careful. Don't overstep the boundaries of what you're trying to paint on. Leave a nice Xandry dust freaking line straight through all of our uh, clean work here. So just be careful. You'll knock it out of the park though. So one day I'll make the uh, decision to go through and get the Mr. Weathering, Mr. Hobbies black equivalent and just do it as a uh, oil wash. But until we get there, this is where we're at today. We're just coming through, hitting it with a nice thin down dark tone coat. We're also making sure that we hit the uh, wolf pelts while we're at it. So now we're on to lead belcher. Nothing crazy here. We've all seen this a million times. So we've got our nice undercoat of black. We're coming through just putting our nice coat of silver on top of it. If you do need a second coat, jam up, do your second coat. But typically when you do this layer of black underneath, you should be square biz. To work on the face, we're moving to Bugman's Glow. We're just trying to lay down a nice dark skin tone coat that we can work up from and put our highlights into. I'm still not sold on this. Y'all all keep preaching to me that you need to start with this. This is a necessity. Mm, I'm still big on the starting with Kitty and Flesh Tone. It ultimately all comes up looking like that on my models, but at the same time, you do you. If you like it, do it. We moved to Averlin Sunset and Grace here one to one. It's thinned down and we're just trying to put a highlight onto these shoulder pads, okay? We also go the opposite direction, Averlin Sunset and XV88, water this down, and we're just trying to focus this on the bottom of the shoulder pad here. That way, if you see it, it causes a nice transition from the tops of it to the bottom of it. So now we move on to Army Painter Strong Tone to go ahead and start working on the bones we laid down a couple steps ago. We're just putting this down, that way we can highlight it back up, start with another coat, and go from there. No biggie. We're also doing his hair while we're at this step, and we're doing the handle to the axe to give that a little bit of interest while we're at it. Pulling out the dark tone again now that the silver has dried, we're just coming through and establishing a nice wash on the metals. So back to working on the face, we come in with Katie and Flesh Tone. We're trying to just leave the Bugman's Glow in the deepest recesses while giving it a highlight to go up to. So we're focusing on the top of the head because that's getting the most light, obviously. We focus on his cheeks, his nose, and just try and leave the Bugman's Glow in the deepest recesses on this model's head. Pulling out the Xandry Dust again, we're going through and just highlighting and bringing back up the color that was washed down by our army painter strong tone earlier so we're focusing on the hair we start initially picking out all the little nodules on his hairs and it gets a little tedious our brush gets a little dry so we just kind of start wet dry brushing that 
We also go through and pick out any of the high points on the skulls that we need to paint to bring them back from the shaded down color to their base tone. To move on to washing the golds in the face, we come through with an Army Painter flesh tone. All we're doing here is washing all of our golds and the skin tone to make sure that it gets some of the wash in the recesses to cause it to have a little bit of interest and variety. We do work up later to try and make it come back to the mid-tone, mid but at the same time this will give nice depth in the recesses. We use XV88 to highlight up the straps on the axe handle. I'm using a crisscross diagonal highlight to make this look great. To highlight up our golds, we're coming through with Liberator Gold. We're just trying to hit points where it's going to cause the metal to show a little bit of interest. So on that nice sheaf there, we're just trying to add a little bit of highlight to the bottom curve. That way it catches the eye because of the shape of it. For the Aquila on the chest, we're using a white wet dry brush here. And we're just coming through top down to try and add a little bit of interest. Same concept here, a little edge highlight. Metals are so forgiving whenever you just dirty wet blend them together. So don't be afraid of it. For the runes on the uh, on the model here, we're coming through with a very watered down Lothran blue. So what we're wanting here is to get this to the point where we touch the brush to the model and it seeks out these uh, recesses where the runes are. We just draw them in with the paintbrush and it should be good to go. It's really super simple if you get your paint consistency to the right level to do these. The only thing that can be really tricky about it is if you have your paint a little bit too dry. The good thing is if you do mess it up, take your thumb, wipe that sucker off, and you still have a decent looking effect. You just have to come back through now, fill it back up with paint. All we're doing is filling these cavities with paint to cause a little bit of interest in them. Now we're coming through with a dry brush of XV88 onto the wolf pelts. Uh, for the one on his uh, stomach, his loincloth, we do have to use a much smaller one, so just be mindful of that. So to highlight the hair as well as the bones around him, we're coming through with the Ushabdi bone. This isn't watered down, this is straight off the wet palette. We're just trying to hit the little nodules, any of the high peaks on his hair, on his little Captain Price freaking beard here. And then we're also wanting to hit the bones around his body while we're at it. So for the claws on the pelt, we're focusing towards the tips. For any of the skulls around him, we're focusing on the higher points that are going to get the most sun. The final color for this model we're coming through with is Rune Fang Steel. We're just trying to add a little bit of interest to the axe handle and then to his bolter while we're at it. So again, you saw how hard I went on that, just putting that color down. It's really not a big deal. These colors blend super easy. All right, guys, so here's our finished product. I think he turned out great. I really love the way this model is sculpted. He looks like he is just in the heat of damn battle, so... Guys, thanks for checking me out. I'm glad y'all could be here to see what we can put out this week. This guy looks awesome. If you found something useful here, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Share this video if you got maybe someone starting a Space Wolf's Army. I've got a whole plethora of stuff on this channel he can maybe find useful, he or she. So, again, thank y'all. We'll see y'all next week. Bye for now.